Italy. Olive, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. I understand that you are in Budapest. You're currently filming something. You're not allowed to yeah. say what. Um, but, <laughs> I, think what I can say what it is. I'm, I'm, it currently, is. Uh, I'm currently filming a show called Halo, which is based on the video game Halo. Wow. Uh, that's I'm incredible. In five, five worlds. That's uh, mad. Yeah. When you when, when you got that part, obviously you were aware of the huge franchise yeah. that is Halo. Yeah. So what is that phone call like? It was very, very bizarre because I I personally don't I have I wasn't ever a, a kind of heavy gamer, but um uh I was in a, a couple of relationships with people who were very, very in, big on gaming and one in particular who loved Halo. Um, so I knew of this game through him. And so it was kind of a, a funny thing. Um, it was kind of like weirdly full circle, like hearing all about this, this game when I was like a teenager to then like being in my twenties and getting cast in, you know, essentially the TV show for the game. So yes, yeah. that's bizarre. mad. I, I like I like you say I'm not a big gamer or anything like that, but I know what Halo is, and I think yeah, a lot of people yeah. are going to be like that. So that's mad. Um, but of course, Olive, we're not here to talk about Halo today. Unfortunately, uh, we are here to talk about uh, the wondrous show that is Tracy Beaker, a show yeah. that um, I grew up with, a lot of others grew up with, and currently it's going mental because my mum Tracy Beaker has just come out. Um, of course, you played Alice in the original. Um, so let's go back in time. Let's talk about how you got that role of Alice. Right. So I went to a children in need party. Uh, there was an episode of Tracy Beaker that was like a children in need special. And I went just to be in the audience. It was like a big treat being able to just go and see like this show that I was obsessed with and like be in the audience while they were filming stuff like really far away. Um, and I was asked somehow to audition for the show. And I, I remember getting into the car and being like, oh my gosh, this is insane. It was this show that I absolutely loved that sometimes I wasn't really allowed to watch because my parents said it made me behave naughtily, which I- How many heard people have this, said that? Yes. I, so this. That is madness to me. Cause it was just sort of on in the background. My parents would have never stopped me watching that. I don't know, this, what, you know I was never- tells adults to bog off and is like funny when they want to be. It was just like, this crazy concept mm. um so yeah it was it was so exciting but then I I didn't hear anything after that for forever you know I think it was, might have been maybe for, for a child it felt like years but it might have been 10 months or a year later that I heard anything so I kind of had forgotten about it at that point um and then one day I was asked to audition and my parents didn't really want me to get into uh, acting at the uh, kind of ripe age of 10 years old but they thought that it might be a good idea for me to audition because I they know I wanted to be an actor and they thought mm -hmm. if I auditioned and then you know most likely I didn't get it then I would have the experience of okay so within the industry there there are jobs that you audition for and you don't get and that's a part of it and not yeah. to discourage you but just to teach me that that's a natural part of like the like a lesson almost yes. like this is what happened this this is what sometimes happens essentially yeah exactly so I I went in and I auditioned and everyone was so lovely to me and then I think I, I feel like I auditioned a lot I feel like I might have done five auditions which is I mean insane now I can't imagine doing five auditions for something but um I, I remember on the the final audition they gave me a mug a Tracy Beaker mug and a Tracy Beaker top wow and I remember getting in the car and I said to my mom I, I said I think that means I haven't got it doesn't it my mum was like probably I mean like for a kid I, I thought that that's kind of the consolation prize as a, a child who's auditioning for this show that's yeah. like the big kids tv show yeah is that you know if you don't get it we'll give you a mug and and a top and I said okay um and a week later my parents took me into the kitchen I remember it so distinctly like sitting on the kitchen counter and my parents saying to me um we've got something to tell you, you have been offered the role of Alice. And it was just insane. I, I was so surreal. It was just insane. 
it was so insane. And then I remember that we were filming it that summer and um, just going to Wales, like driving for like something like four hours or something like to, it, to Wales and we drove every time. So it was like this crazily exciting adventure. Um, it was like the, the best summer ever, you know, um, driving to Wales and meeting all of the cast and yeah, it was just, it was wild. Well, that was going to bring me on to my next point. So obviously you were, were 10 years old. You grew up with this show. So was it weird yeah. actually meeting the cast and, and seeing people that you'd idolised on the television? It was. Um, because of my parents' job, I had yeah. spent quite a lot of my childhood meeting people that I had idolised. Yeah, so it course. wasn't in terms of like in a fan way, but it was just, I think the weird thing was because I was more within people in the music industry. So I think that like being around actors who are completely different from their characters and talking to someone and having to register, I'm not speaking to this character, I'm speaking to a completely different person who is often absolutely nothing like the person they're playing. And I think that was the kind of surreal thing was like creating these relationships with people that I, I, in my head, I, I know this person so well, but I actually don't know them in the slightest, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, when I was speaking to um, Danny Harmer about the show, she said how she learned a lot on set that she would yeah. carry with her today in terms of, you know, filming and, and the art of being on a set. It, it, was it the same for you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. It was, um, I mean, even just being around, because I'm the eldest in my family. Um, and up until I was seven, I was an only child. So like, I haven't, I hadn't had much experience being with people slightly older than me. I'd had a lot of experience being with adults, but hanging out every day with people who were like, been doing the job for a bit lo longer, but were like still teenagers, everyone was Seasoned like- thespians. <laughs> so cool. I was like, oh my gosh. Everyone is so cool. I just wanted to appear like as cool as possible. Um, yeah. yeah, it was great. And, um, you know, what I realised the other day, it's been 20 years since Tracy Beaker was on TV, which is mad. Like, mad. it's mad for me because, you know, I used to run home with my sister and we'd watch it on yeah. the telly. Um, so it, it's just mental to comprehend that that was 20 years ago. Do, so do, do people still talk to you about Tracy Beaker? Yeah. Yeah, people still recognize me from Trace Speaker, which is insane. It's been 16 years and people still, I think the funny thing is, is that when I did Tracy Beaker, I was a kid growing up in North London who didn't sound like Alice. I sounded like a kid from North London. And so I put on this kind of fake kind of posh accent. And um, I think now what's weird is because after that, I then went to boarding school. And so this is now my voice yeah. is that people weirdly look at me and they were more maybe recognize me as my character now because I'm almost weirdly more similar to Alice now as an adult than I ever was when I was yeah. there. This is like a 10 year old. And it must have been such a great character to play Alice because she was sort of a little bit kooky, a little bit. So yeah, yeah she, she, like, she was great. So it must have been such fun. Brilliant. So brilliant and so like just saw the world through such innocent eyes. So beautifully innocent. That's what I loved yeah. about that character. And of course, you, you spent a lot of time on the set, uh, Tracy Beaker. I think you were in just purely the fifth series. Um, yeah. But um, do you still keep in contact with any of the people you're on set with? No, do you not? I, I, I don't. It's such a shame. I think I think maybe it's because I was of how young I was. Mm. It, well, I wasn't yet at the age where it was, I couldn't keep in contact with anyone. I was 10, so I kind of hung out with whoever my parents arranged me to have like a play date with. Do you know, I don't think yeah, I was- Yeah, 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 yeah. I think if I'd have been like 13 or something, then it might have been a thing of like, oh, let's get each other's numbers and remember to message each other. Um, but no, I, I haven't. Do you know, actually, I worked with my chaperone on Tracy Beaker. Because there we he are. <laughs> he was the acting coach on a job that I did uh, last two years ago called Dark Money. Um, and I just, I was so good 
seeing him again because he was just the best chaperone ever like he would like arrange all these activities for us to do on my days off and like yeah it was just he made it such a good time yeah um well uh, olive um thank you so much for having a chat with me today about tracy beaker recounting your memories of the program um you know you you haven't kept in contact with these people but i'm hoping this video stems into one big reunion tracy beaker oh, sesh that. Yeah. Um, and if I'm not invited now, the <laughs> amount of PR I've done for that series, you know what, well, whatever. Um, but thank you very much, Olive. Have a lovely day and good luck with Halo. You too. Thank you so much.